Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is and peace out to the rest of you. The blackest hearted, blackest minded, blackest man on social media signing black in and shining again, asking you to hit the share button because the message is more important than the message. That being said, this message, um, as you already know, is addressed to someone I don't normally address. And I, I say a category. It's not an individual, but a category. I was writing this message, though, when I saw an individual message telling me uh, of an unsubscription because I go in on Western women. So as I was writing the message and I saw that message, I thought, OK, well, this is just great. I mean, what a coincidence. But now to the one unsubscribing, just understand that I was writing this message when I saw yours. So this was going to come um, whether you sent your message or not. But you can learn from this. When I say wicked witches of the West, I use that term for the same reason I use the term Boomshika, Bonquisha and Sapphire. That is because the innocent should not be included in the indictment. Naturally. I think we could all agree on that. If you're not doing this, you should not take the blame for this. I damn sure won't. Uninvolved, deadbeat, baby daddies. I'm not taking the blame for that. Even though I have to live miles away from them, I stay involved. And I'm doing this because I have to live miles away from them. It's not an option. So, um, I'm not going to take the blame for what some other dude did. You had other guys that, that had no barriers to entry, so to speak. In other words, the women were just giving them the draws, just giving up all the walls. And that's what these guys were dealing with. So since these guys were just, you know, getting the walls, with, they didn't have to really spit game and they didn't have to do all this other stuff. They're the ones that got they're, they're the ones that have caused the issue there. If they're they're the only ones who even could be deadbeat baby daddies, assuming they even became deadbeats. Assuming they even became dads. They're the only ones who could become dads, let alone baby daddies, let alone deadbeat baby daddies. They got to go through all of these things. They got to go through barriers to become deadbeat baby daddies. The men who have these barriers to entry, they get stopped before that point. Sorry, but I got to say it for what it is. We men have made things too easy, and that's when I go in on men. And you've heard me do it before. We men have made it too easy. Very much so. We've made sex and commitment and marriage too easy. Not enough barriers to entry. Meanwhile, they're making... Uh, they're making sex entirely too difficult um, and dating and by extension marriage entirely too difficult until, of course, they're now bringing a hell of a lot less to the table than what they demand of men, in which case then they don't make marriage difficult at all. No barriers to marriage. So the easiest thing for a black man in the West to find is a hell of a bad deal. Women got options. Men don't. That's why I point the finger at the bulk of the Western women and I don't do so when it comes to the men. The men are actually a mixed bag. A lot of everything. The, w w the Western women are not that mixed. They are technically speaking a mixed bag. But the ones that are innocent are a minority. Innocent men generally speaking a majority in between the average and the outright stellar among them they're going to be more than the guilty ones we already know we already have the stats to prove that the only men you possibly could be complaining about can amount to more than 13 percent now that being said I'm going to tell you a story to illustrate my point. And this is a story that is designed to help those of you that are innocent women. And if you say you're innocent, I give the benefit of the doubt. I don't just assume you're lying and just saying that I know you might be, but I don't assume it about you individually. If you've interacted with me 
as a woman, it does not mean men harm. I give the benefit of the doubt. And, and about five of you in the last 36 hours have done so. So great. Now, let me tell you. At the end of the day, uh, I'll tell you this story and you're going to see where it leads. Right? You're going to understand the lesson inherently in it. There were two men from India, but they were living abroad and they didn't really know much about each other. They just knew each other existed. I think they met, but one earned a living honestly and the other one was a thief. The thief was not caught in the act of theft. However, people could tell because things turned up missing after he left and he was always walking in a hurry. And it was always from the market. So they wouldn't really hurt this guy if they didn't catch him, but he was too fleet of foot. He was too fast a runner so they can never catch him with a stolen item. And they pretty much said, if we catch him, we can prove it's him. We're going to kill him. We're going to beat him to death. So they did, but not like you think. One day, something turned up missing. He was walking off really fast. The owner of the missing property asked everyone else to stop him. The man broke out into a run, of course, and he was gone. But the shop owners in the market went, into, went in the direction that he had run, and they came to the house of the honest man. They asked him, look, did he call you? Did he call out to you? And he said, no. And they asked him, is he, uh, is he hiding anywhere around here? And he said, no, I haven't seen anybody hiding. So they took his, gave him the benefit of the doubt and took his word for it. The thief was never seen leaving his house, but later on, the thief went up to his house, knocked on the door, empty hands. He told the homeowner, I forgot something when I left here last time. Saw it to bother you for it. I think it's on your table. The man brought it out to him. And so the thief was seen leaving the house, going, first going to the house, empty handed, talking and then leaving the house with a stolen item from the market in his hand. The witnesses called the shop owners and they all came and they beat that thief and they beat the honest man. But they beat the thief to a cripple instead of killing him because they wanted him to beg for the rest of his life. And he couldn't run if he stole. <laughs> and they took the honest man and they beat him to death because they, they felt that he had betrayed them even more. The honest man knew that the thief was not completely right. He just didn't catch him in the act of theft. But because he wasn't willing to at least say to the thief, listen, whatever the hell you've been doing, you've been earning your living some kind of way that nobody knows about. Now, that's the odd part about it. So if you're looking for a place to hide, because see, he really did hide the thief and he lied to the people. Instead of saying to the thief, listen, explain yourself before they get here, because if you really did steal, you need to go out there and face them. He didn't even have the decency to do that. And as they were beating him, he kept saying, well, maybe someone gave it to him. Well, maybe he was trying to make excuses while they were beating both of them. The thief didn't have the decency to say he did not know that this was not mine. He thought it was mine. Because that would have meant he had to confess against himself. That's exactly what my students have been like. Now I teach advanced students, but when I taught regular students, I caught more cheaters than other teachers did because I knew what to look for. I actually used this principle. I would tell them on the first day, if you cheat, it's a wrap. You are a piece of crap. I'm going to write the report on you when I catch you. You're going to repeat this, uh, this level. If you cheat, you get a zero. End of story. Cheating means you give a signal to someone. You look at their paper, you show their paper, you show your paper to them, you talk to them at all. That's cheating. If you turn and you say, what time is it? You're cheating. Don't talk to another student while the test is going on and you will not get a zero for cheating. Are we clear? 
And the students that would try to defend it would doctor what if and what if and what if and maybe and they want to get into a heavy discussion about it, trying to challenge me on it. Those niggas were the cheaters and I just watched them on a test. I'd simply put them together on test day, seat them together. They would cheat. I'd bust them. The thing was that good students who were fluent in English and were only taking the classes as a formality to get the paperwork done would sometimes defend these cheaters. And then I knew these are the ones who give them answers. And I'd wait for them and I'd catch them. That's how I busted them. And I told them around the middle of the semester, if this is, I told them students, do not defend the bad student. Don't do it. Don't defend the one who cheats. Don't defend the one who is absent. Don't stand up for and defend these students that are bad students. They're going to get the consequences. Fuck the shuck up and let them because you can join them. So if he's absent and I mark him absent and he comes and argues about it the next day and you defend him, you're absent too. If he's talking in Arabic when he's supposed to be using English and you defend him for not using English, you're going to get the same absence he gets. Because this is not a beginner's English class. He can make mistakes in English, but he cannot use full sentences in Arabic. That's not allowed. You defend him for doing it, you, you share the consequence. Now I'm sitting up and listening to some of you that identify yourself as innocent trying to defend the wicked witches of the West. I call them wicked witches for the same reason I use the terms Bonquisha, Bonshika, and Sapphire. Don't defend them. If you're defending an individual because you know that the case was misunderstood, I would fuck the shuck up and listen. But do not defend the ones that we know are doing something out of pocket. Do not defend Aisha Curry. Don't tell me maybe she, no, maybe she's disrespectful as hell talking like that and in front of his mother too. Don't defend Nicole Lowry Parker. We know why? Because she was on Judge Lynn. She sat down with Judge Lynn before and Judge Lynn told her, let him talk. Then you speak. Take turns talking. Stop interrupting him. She told Nicole Ari Parker this years ago, Nicole Ari Parker, we now know, won't stop interrupting. How do we know? She did all the talking on that. Boris Kojo didn't even bat. He, he just kept beating. He didn't even raise his voice to say anything because she would interrupt him. Now, you ain't got to agree, but she would just cut, she would interrupt him and cut him off. Why should he communicate with her? Do not defend Giselle Bunchen. They're worth she and Tom Brady worth 600 million. The house chores could be paid for to be done. Do not defend Tina Knowles. Don't defend them at all. Because it's always something to complain about. And Patrice O'Neill was right when he said that happy wife, happy life thing is not usually the case. Usually when there's a happy wife, there's a miserable somebody else. And I know that this normally is the case in the United States. I had to leave to find out that a lady could be happy and someone else not be miserable. And even then, I don't presume to know what's in any woman's heart until they show it. That being said, if you were innocent, fine, just stop defending the guilty. I'm talking about them. And I've already specified that one of the things that irritates me about them is that you wind up having to suffer for the dumb stuff they do. If you find yourself in this market. Straight like that. That being said, um. If you really think that you have it harder than men, keep in mind that you can say that you don't want, um, keep in mind, you know what, first off, just keep in mind that you get approached. It declines as you get older, but you get approached. You have options. Keep in mind that men you may even want when you're younger, you will never approach. Men don't have as many options. Keep in mind that a man can have half as many standards as women have, and he will eliminate every woman, period. Half as many standards, not because the women who meet them don't exist, but because they're going to be taken. And if they're not, they will sit back 
and never they will never show him interest, never show him choosing signals. They will sit back and wait to be approached, and if they're not, they will sneak their butts in and out of sex stores and buy some toys, pay their own money to buy a toy, while waiting on a man that they want to come and approach them and spend his money trying to impress her. While she's got a toy in her drawer that she paid for. That's duplicitous. So keep in mind, if you ain't guilty, don't waste your breath defending them. Because you're not going to always be distinguishable from them if you keep on doing this. If I ain't talking about you, I ain't talking about you. If you defend them, then the expression hit dogs holler is going to apply and you're not going to seem so innocent. Nobody will be able to tell that you are because you're defending the ones that ain't. There was a lady that married a close friend of mine. She's a friend of mine. She married a closer friend of mine. I'm going to tell y'all straight like this. She's an attorney and a good one. You know why she lost him? She couldn't stop being an attorney at home, cross-examining everything. Eventually, she quit talking. She made an assumption about why he left a particular job and enrolled in some classes, made an assumption, didn't ask him, and he did not live off of her. She made an assumption that he was planning to live off of her when, in fact, he had saved up so that he could put himself through this, and then he could become a physician so that she could retire or work part-time and be less stressed. She never found this out because she would not discuss with him his plans. She just made the assumption. She cut him off. She wouldn't hug him. She wouldn't touch him. She started sleeping in another room. They never, they stopped consummating the marriage. She came home with some hickeys on the neck one day. He said, this bee is cheating on me and I never did anything to deserve it. And she filed, filed for divorce. He gave it to her. And then when the judge gave the final divorce decree, she came up to him and said, can we talk? And she was crying. And that man said, you know, the only difference between you and other women I've been through this before with was that I wasn't married to them. I'm not sure I want to hear anything you got to say. Because other women have flipped, you know, switched up like that. And they had very dumb reasons for doing it. The issue here was that she was not willing to separate him from the guilty men. And the reason why I sided against her with that was because she did not, she didn't communicate with him. That's why. And because more importantly, he never defended any FS, you know, any shock fit that some guilty man did. He never defended it. Never did. He didn't even defend the men that cheated on her, and he had every reason to do it. That's why I sided with him against her in this case. When another man, my own cousin, did his wife wrong, the whole family sided with her against him. My whole family sided with her against him, our own blood. That's real. So don't tell me that I need to change my tune or change my tone. If you're guilt, if you're innocent, you need to, all you got to do is go and give the guilty one some advice. That's it. And if you suffered in spite of being innocent, I don't blame you if you don't say anything one way or another, but there's no reason to come after me because I don't go after the innocent. And really, I don't think any man on my channel, that any man that subscribes to me is going to do that. As a matter of fact, I've made that a clear point specifically so that if men don't want to hear me say, leave the innocent ones alone, then they'd unsubscribe and they probably have. Specifically, partially for that reason, because it's just it's not even to appease you. It's just simply because that's the wrong thing to do. That's it. But if you want to defend them, understand you've already put on their uniform and you're waving their flag and nobody can tell the difference between you and them. Black heart, black mind, black out.